In the midst of a housing shortage in the Northern Territory, many people have sought to realise their dreams by contracting a builder to construct a new home. But for some, this has ended in nightmare. They say when they've complained to government agencies about delays and defects, they've been given the brush off. Even people who've commissioned homes under the Territory's affordable housing scheme say the government has rejected their pleas for help. In August 2009, Geraldine and Gary Want contracted Bear Homes to build their dream home for $399,000 in Humpty Doo in the Darwin rural area. Under the contract, the house was to have been finished by May 2010, but there were lengthy, unexplained delays. Come mid-October 2009, not a thing had been done. The slab was poured on the 19th of November uh, 2009 and then saw nobody on site again until approximately Australia Day where somebody turned up and started doing some works. Um, just nothing, no, no notification from the builder of what was going on. We wrote to them, uh, we emailed them, we phoned them, just never got a response to anything. Once had to move their furniture into a container and hire a donga to live in on the site. So as of November, we were hit with a progress payment for the slab going down. So now we're paying part of our mortgage um, for that portion, as well as whatever it costs us for renting the transportable and other living costs. After March 2010, the building work came to a virtual standstill. In July 2010, Bear Homes asked for a final payment of $81,000 before the house was even complete. It was basically saying that everything had been done. That was our understanding of it, that everything had been completed and finished, which we knew hadn't been, which is why we turned around, said to, we sent it to the bank, the bank withdrew it and said no. Bear Homes had breached its contract by not completing the building in time or asking for an extension. We're saying along here, the concrete work. There were still 23 items of unfinished work and 32 outstanding defects. The slab is actually being built on the surface of the ground. It was never buried into the ground itself. And there is no edge thickening along that entire area, which means, as can be seen here, when we do get the rains coming through and the flooding coming through, it's getting in and washing in underneath. So it's all the sand and, the, and everything else underneath is slowly getting washed out. That's going to cause problems, as far as we understand, um, potentially for the, um, for the foundations and for the slab itself. We see here the staining along the wall. In July 2010, the Wants tried to terminate their contract, but Bear Homes took them to the Northern Territory Supreme Court for the final payment. And last August, the court ruled that they had not terminated the contract properly. We're waiting for housing prices to go down. The Wants had accused Bear Homes of being unable to complete the building rather than failing to proceed with the works with due diligence. The court ordered the Wants to pay Bear Homes the $81,000 plus $50,000 in interest on the outstanding payment. Everyone expects you to understand everything. They're waiting for the result of a Supreme Court appeal and may have to pay up to $300,000 in legal costs. If we lose this house because we can't pay debts and we've got to sell it to, to get out of that, then fine. Um, the house is no longer a house that is a home. Um, it's never it, been a home. It was, it was um, we looked at this as a something in the future for when we retire to, you know, um, to build on, to add on. Bear Homes has been asked repeatedly to respond, but no one has been available. The once tried to get help from the Northern Territory Government's building advisory services and the Minister Peter Chandler. Finally, they came back and said, well, no, this is all contractual, nothing to do with us. See you later, goodbye. Go take it to the court, sue them. We were at a point um, financially that we really didn't have the funds to continue on. The building control director has told the ABC, building advisory services investigated an allegation that the building work had not been constructed in accordance with the building permit. The investigation evidenced that the allegation was in part correct, 
However, this did not result in any detriment to the building owner. In Palmerston, David Cunnington is in dispute with builder George Milatos and his company Titan Building Services over a new home in Rosebury he commissioned for $260,000. This side here, large repair job. But there's 40 other points that I pointed out to the building advisory service that were wrong with the house. In the elevated house, the floor on which the walls sit has cracked and holed. Two layers of material, as you can see. The hole on the top is because of the screw that's come through and pushed out a piece of material, but the board's still loose. As you can see, James, more patches and loose flooring. In August last year, David Cunnington complained to the building advisory services. My partner who'd done piece in writing to them, they were sent back a response that told us that the holes and the cracks in the flooring of the house was a contractual problem with the builder and we were to go away basically. The building advisory services dismissed David Cunnington's complaint. It said, although the floor sheeting is showing signs of product defect, it meets the National Construction Code, and there's no evidence of serious negligence. They went through the floor by, by The two parties have been disputing whether and how the floor will be replaced. George Milatos has now launched Supreme Court action against David Cunnington for the final payment of $83,000. Mr. Milatos's lawyer has advised him not to speak to the ABC on camera during the case. The house has had an estimate real estate value, rental value, of around about $700 a week. So I've lost that for the past, what, over 12 months now. So that's gone. I've also invested over $30,000 in legal costs to my lawyer just to, just to, just to attend court. Um, I'm, I'm down the gurgle a fair, fair way at the moment, yeah. The building advisory services told David Cunnington and the builder if further complaints were received, they could be considered a pattern of negligent conduct and George Milatos could be referred to the Building Practitioners Board for professional misconduct. But on the 27th of February, the building advisory services told David Cunnington there was no such pattern and there would be no further investigation. The service has provided this response to 7.30. A thorough assessment of the complaint found no breach of the building legislation or evidence of serious negligence or incompetence. Some of the buyers of the Northern Territory government's new affordable houses in Bellamac and Palmerston have also complained about building by George Milatos. Under the Home Build Access Scheme, the government buys up to 30% of the houses to reduce the cost to the main purchaser. One of the Bellamac affordable homeowners complained about her house built by George Milatos for $395,000 in November last year. I've had the tiles in the bathroom replaced four times. Late last year, my neighbour and I found out that we'd been paying each other's power bills for the last 12 months. She went to cut a wire in her house and actually heard that my power had been the one shut off, not hers. I've got cracks in the paint. My whole garden area floods. My balcony floods. I've fallen off my balcony and down my stairs before. My roof shakes. The building advisory services told her the problems were poor workmanship rather than non-compliance with the National Construction Code. The Building Advisory Service came out here and seemed very helpful at the time. However, a couple of days later, they sent me a letter saying that there was absolutely nothing that they could do for me. The service advised her to complain to the selling agent, Bellamac Proprietary Limited. The government actually owns a small percentage of this house, so I thought being in sort of a partnership with them would help me a little bit with all the faults that I've had, but it hasn't. On the 5th of February, the owner of another Bellamac affordable home built by George Milatos complained about the floor cracking. The building advisory services inspected and referred him to the Legal Aid Commission. Although his lawyer advised him not to speak on camera, George Milatos demonstrated his workmanship by showing the ABC around some of the other 16 affordable houses he's just finished building in Bellamac. There were no cracks in the floor tiles in the ones he showed us. 
Mr Milatos has advised that any complaints about the affordable houses should be taken up with Bellamac Proprietary Limited's project manager's NS Projects. NS Projects provided a statement. NS Projects has responded quickly to concerns offering residents three options to fix loose tiles, fix loose tiles and lay vinyl laminate floor tiles over them or offer a cash payment to owners to arrange their own fix. Defects and their remediation are a frustrating but normal part of the building process. The Building Advisory Service responded to the ABC, a pattern of negligent conduct would require a number of complaints to be received, investigated and evidence obtained demonstrating such a pattern. To date, this pattern has not been established. Last year, the Northern Territory Ombudsman investigated two complaints about the building advisory services from people seeking help dealing with unregistered builders. It was clear that there was a need for some specific policies and guidelines about how matters were investigated and how complaints were dealt with. Uh, and so we recommended that um, there be much closer detail in terms of how matters were investigated. On the Ombudsman's recommendation, the government increased the Building Advisory Services staff from three people to four. He also recommended builder misconduct penalties be raised from the present amount of $6,000. For example, in some jurisdictions, a fine for unregistered building may be as much as $100,000 for a company. Outside, Jane, the builder has replaced all the flooring out here. The Territory Third Government time, sought to strengthen correct. protection by giving uh, the Consumer Affairs Commission CCHG. new powers to help people whose contracts with builders started after January 2013. So they can apply to us to have mediation, for example, and with that we get both parties together, we discuss the issues there, and there can be a, an agreed outcome, and that agreed outcome can be a binding order. So that gives both parties a clear idea of where they're going forward. And the end of it where we've stopped here is where we step down for, for the veranda and the roof stops at, at that point, yeah? Last January, the government also set up the Master Builders Fidelity Fund, an insurance policy that homeowners pay for. Some builders have dismissed it as providing very limited protection. Clients think they are protected. And then when you explain it to them that you're only protected if I die or disappear or become insolvent. Then they scratch their head saying, well, why have I just paid an increased premium from TIO for a policy that's actually not insurance? They have formed a builder's collective calling on the government to replace the scheme. We need to see it replaced with a government-run scheme where there's an authority with all the players being on a board so that the fund is managed by that authority, but it has very strong uh, dispute and resolution, which would happen up front before a dispute gets out of control. And that could be activated by either the builder or the consumer. And then that way we can have a situation where we believe that we would resolve the greater majority of disputes very easily and very simply under a very strong guideline. The planning minister, Peter Chandler, was asked for an interview. The territory opposition has become aware of concerns about the government's handling of complaints about builders while campaigning for the blame by-election. They go to the building advisory service, they get told that it's shoddy workmanship, it's not negligent, so there's nothing we can do. I don't think that's good enough. The government needs to step in and help these families. The Ombudsman has offered to investigate any further complaints about the Building Advisory Services. As you walk in the door, Jane. The Consumer Affairs Commission is also ready to assist, armed with its new powers. But those who've already tried to seek help say they would never have commissioned a new home if they'd known what they'd have to deal with. It's a nightmare, it really is. Um, the, the owners of the contract, the customers, the, the, the client, the, the um, proprietor, whatever you want to call the person paying uh, the building industry here in Northern Territory realistically has no rights. All we want is a better industry, one that's not going to be continually embarrassed and it's not right that we put people through hell. That, you know, we have people in the Territory at the moment, their lives have been taken over by this issue. 
that's not the way we operate. We shouldn't do that to people. We don't have that right. 